Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game from the final round on the St. Louis Rapid event. Uh, so the, the third day of Rapid, it's Alexander Grishuk versus Magnus Carlsen. And it's, uh, it, like I said, it's quite the game, but it's also a very important game for the standings of the tournament. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out as Sasha has the white pieces and he opens it with E4. Uh, Magnus, of course, goes for his Sicilian with C5, Knight F3, D6 and now D4. Uh, striking in the center, so uh, very normal stuff. Captures, captures, and the knight to f6. We have knight to c3, and here Magnus goes for g6. He goes immediately for the dragon variation of the Sicilian, uh, which is, uh, well, uh, at some point it uh, you know fell out of fashion because uh, black uh, black player thought that it's going to be too easy for white to attack, but now it's slowly coming back uh, with players uh, of, uh, you know, uh, very, very, very great skill such as Magnus, uh, also Daniel Dubov, very, very big fan of the dragon, uh, are playing it, uh, and and of course a lot of other people. So let's see how Sasha deals with it, and uh, is he able to, to tame the dragon? We have Bishop to e3, uh, preparing the Yugoslav attack. We have Bishop to g7, uh, preparing the castle and f3. Now uh, the Yugoslav attack is on the board. Uh, white is ready for Black to castle, and then of course uh, White wants to. Uh, bust open black's king side. We have a6. Magnus will now prepare to push on the queen side and queen to d2. Of course, at some point you want to have the option of trading off the dark square bishop as this is black's uh, strongest piece. Uh, and now the immediate h5, preventing any sudden pushes uh, on the king side. So if uh, uh, Sasha wants to push, he, he's definitely going to have to prepare it, uh, rather than just uh, starting with h4, g4, like, like you would enjoy. Bishop to c4, uh, developing the bishop to this very nice diagonal, uh, and knight, knight b to d7, preparing to shift the knight over to c5. We have bishop back to b3, and knight to c5 now, putting pressure on the bishop, but also uh, on the center here. Uh, we have queenside castle, and here uh, there is a game where bishop to d7 was played, but b5 uh, immediately in this position is a new move, so already as of move 11 we have a completely new game. And now Magnus wants to play bishop b7, rook c8, b4, and, and continue attacking here. Uh, so here we have king to b1, a nice prophylactic move by Grishuk, and bishop to b7. So these are normal developing moves uh, for the knight or uh, sorry, for, for uh, a lot of Sicilians, including uh, uh, the Knight of S, this is the dragon. Uh, we have a3, and now Knight captures on b3. Uh, getting rid of this uh, bishop, uh, it's a very strong bishop controlling this diagonal, so you might as well uh, get rid of it, mess up uh, white's pawn structure here, and uh, bring your rook to the c file. So captures, captures, and now rook to c8. Uh, here... Uh, we have knight to c2. Uh, Grishuk has complete control of the d5 square here, but he wants to imp even uh, improve his control. So he wants to bring the knight to c2 to b4 and then uh, bring this knight over to d5. And then it's going to be an amazing piece there. Uh, so knight back to c2. Uh, we have queen to c7. And now bishop to d4. Uh, just... Uh, uh, countering this uh, this bishop here uh, on g7. We have castles finally by Magnus and now queen back to f2. And here you have to be uh, somewhat careful. For example, if rook d8, just bishop b6 wins the exchange. So you have to, uh, you know, be very careful on what you do here. And here Magnus goes for uh, pawn to e5. Now this forces uh, Grishuk to... Uh, to, uh, to state what he, his plans are with, with the dark square bishop. However, uh, you no longer have the option of playing e6 since this pawn is already on e5 and you don't have a c pawn, so the d5 square is now even weaker and the d6 pawn will be, uh, will be a great weakness in the position. So bishop to b6 uh, with tempo as it attacks the queen, queen d7 and only now knight to b4. And now the knight is coming to d5. Uh, and here, well, uh, you could go for something like queen e6, go after the b3 pawn. Uh, Magnus goes for rook captures on c3. And this is uh, usually a, a signature knight or move, but you can, uh, as you can see, play, uh, play it in uh, a lot of lines of the Sicilian. So rook captures on c3, giving up the exchange here uh, to further weaken uh, uh, Grishuk's queen side. And now queen to e6, going after the pawn here. So Grishuk defends it, king to b2, and now comes rook to c8 by Magnus. And now he has a lot of pressure here. Uh, you could even have some ideas of maybe 
capturing here uh, to, just to open up this uh, diagonal of the dark square bishop for example uh, if you made a if you made a slow move here let's say you play h3 then ideas like bishop captures on e4 come to mind uh, f captures knight captures with an attack on the bishop and on the pawn here you will not be able to defend it next uh, move you're going to capture here you're going to move this pawn you're going to open up um, uh, this diagonal and it's going to be a much better game for black uh, however after this rook to c8 move there is one move that really allows Grishuk to uh, t to make something more of the position, uh, but it's not an easy move to find. It's an incredibly strong defensive and attackive mo attacking move. So uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find this only move that uh, you know can can uh, get uh, Grishuk some advantage in this position over Magnus. Well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, this incredibly difficult move to find. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to a5. And bishop to a5 serves as both an attacking move and as a defensive move. Uh, because how do you find such a move? Well, your queen is currently doing nothing. And you would very much enjoy if your queen did something. It is the, the, most important, the, the strongest piece um, uh, in chess. Uh, so here bishop to a5 opens up this diagonal and queen is coming. To, uh, to a7 and this will be a big problem because it's going to be hard to keep an eye on d6 which is a huge weakness you are never playing d5 and also if the queen comes here you will have pressure on the a6 pawn so uh, we we might call this the principle of two weaknesses not not quite but uh, let's say that this is uh, that we, we could um, uh, characterize it as such uh, so here Magnus has to uh, decide how to go about this and he could try uh, bishop captures on e4 here. However, here a queen to b6 is just too strong. You're, ju you're just going after the pawn, you're going after this pawn and you are threatening to, to win the piece. So if knight d5 attacks the queen and knight, you could move the queen, queen b7 and now let's say knight captures here, you're just going to capture here. And once the knight moves, uh, just... Uh, uh, bishop to b4 with an attack, uh, a, a double attack on the d6 pawn, and after captures, captures. Yes, uh, white didn't really achieve all that much, but white doesn't need to achieve all that much. White is up the exchange, and you're you're just winning here. Black has no, uh, black has no counterplay. You're not, you're never crossing the d5 square. The rook is pretty useless on the c file if this bishop doesn't open up, uh, and uh, with with the queen guarding the pawn, it's never opening up. So here. Uh, Magnus said, okay, let's try something different. Let's play d5. And uh, it, it, it does come with, uh, uh, with some poison. Uh, but now Grishuk just continues with his plan. Queen to a7. Now attacking the bishop, uh, attacking uh, the, the pawn here. And the bishop is now overloaded. You cannot defend both of these squares. If you try, for example, queen d7, then again, white just trades down. White doesn't care because white is already up material. Just knight captures. And after you capture, let's say bishop captures, you trade queens captures captures and after rook captures uh black really doesn't have all that much now uh, you're, you're you're attacking this you're still up the exchange and the black has no counterplay white's position is super solid here so after this queen to a7 move uh instead magnus decided to go for bishop to a8 he, he realizes that he needs to give back some material uh, but that he will get some counterplay at least so here, knight captures on a6, Grishu grabs the pawn, also threatening knight to c7 with a double attack here, uh, but uh, Magnus finds a very nice idea, bishop to f8. And here, Magnus allows, uh, well, allow is a strong word, as there's not, not much you can do with black, uh, but uh, he finds a way how he can uh, regain some material after all uh, of this has been traded down. So here, knight c7. Uh, with a double attack and Magnus now pins it, queen e7. So of course now you cannot capture because the queen would hang. So here knight captures on b5. Uh, Grishuk just uh, you know continues merrily grabbing those juicy pawns. Uh, and now queen back to e8. Magnus cannot allow to trade queens as he's just down too much material. Knight back to c7 and now uh, queen back to e7. Again you cannot move the knight. Uh, because the queen hangs but now bishop to b6 and now the queen is defended and uh, knight captures bishop is coming and now comes uh, the idea that magnus had in mind when he played bishop to f8 he plays d captures on e4 and okay knight captures on a8 now the queen trade is forced if you don't trade queens you're just down a piece 
So uh, we have uh, queen captures on a7, trading queens, bishop captures, and rook captures on a8. And now the bishop has to move, and now this bishop uh, on f8 move finally makes sense. Uh, Magnus did all this to, to regain some pawns, as fighting against three connected pass pawns would be uh, would be pretty much an instant resign. So bishop back to f2, and now bishop captures on a3 with check, king c2, and bishop now goes back, bishop to e7, as Magnus doesn't want to suffer uh, any uh, rook to a1 and then you're not going to be able to move the bishop because the rook is on the same file. So rook to a1, of course Garishok now wants to trade and Magnus of course uh, declines the trade. And now uh, if you see, if, if you look at the what's happening on the board, it's five pawns each uh, with Magnus being down the exchange. But he, he does have a bishop and knight so he will of course still play. Rook hd1, Grishuk claims the only two open files on the board with his, with his rooks and now captures on f3. Captures and e4. Magnus wants to get his knight and bishop into the game, so he, he even does this. We have captures, captures, and now as the bishop to f6 is probably the next idea, bishop to d4. Grishuk just stops it, uh, and f5. Now Magnus also starts pushing his pass pawn. King b2. Uh, and king to f7. Both players now improve the positions uh, of their kings and b4 now. Now Grishuk starts pushing on the queen side and Magnus of course uh, returns the favor, favor by pushing on the king side. So g5, king to b3 and now g4. Uh, we have rook to a7 pinning that bishop and now of course Magnus unpins right away. King to e6, rook to a6 check and king to f7 and now c4. Uh, continuing to push uh, and here Magnus could play something like h4 uh, get the g3 and to, to, to start pushing those pawns as fast as possible however he plays bishop to d6 first uh, going after the h2 pawn and it kind of seems like this wins a tempo for black because white has to react to this uh, the truth is it loses a tempo because Grishuk plays bishop to g1 defense and now attacks the bishop so you haven't really won a tempo here uh, you have to react to this and you can't really uh, do all that much. Uh, I mean, uh, wh wh where are you going to move the bishop and the, the, the pawns are coming. So here Magnus defends it with the king, but now comes c5. The bishop now has to move bishop to e5 and here Grishuk just played uh, rook to d5 and it was in this position on move 46 uh, that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as there is really nothing more to be done here. The king cannot approach uh, to, to help out with the defense because the rook is cutting off the entire sixth rank. Uh, you can't defend the bishop anyhow and uh, well of course after you move the bishop you're just going to lose this pawn and now you really don't have any more uh, any more resources to fight with. If, if h4 just rook f4 goes after the knight and the pawn and it, uh, you could give one little check but then after this you're going to lose another pawn and it, it, you know uh, the position just uh, self deteriorates. Uh, so yeah. That's uh, the game from the final round. Uh, Grishuk was able to tame the dragon uh, in great style, if I might say. And uh, this game uh, had a lot of impact on the standings of the tournament. Uh, but we're going to show at least one more game. So uh, we're not going to show the standings just yet. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Ryan Beck, uh, David Kimura, Liam Gossman, uh, Francois Hesla, and Nathan and Lauren Lanier for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz event. The, the Rapid event is actually over, even though we're not going to show the standings just yet. And now we're continuing with the Blitz. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your weekend.